Hi, my name is Jerome Bradford, and this is my music journal, where we explore music album by album. Just jump right into it. Hey, listeners, you're in for another episode of Jerome's Music Journal. Today, I have a repeat guest, my friend Austin Omar. We're going to talk about the cure, uh, disintegration. And as yeah. always, I'll let you start. I always let the guest start off. Yeah. So I think I kind of brought this up to you doing this album or whatever a couple of weeks ago. And like yeah. right away, you're like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. like, duh, like, because I don't know. I think this, like, I don't know about you, but this album's like super influential, like, especially when I was younger, you know, like growing up in grand island where it like at the you know in the like late 90s early 2000s when like a lot of people weren't listening to like 80s post-punk oh. and like 80s music anymore mm -hmm. well, and I, just, I the writing, just the yeah. writing for me uh you know i got into i say poetry in my teenage years so you know there are some albums that I can put on and write for poetry, especially this album. And I think this album kind of shaped me too in the hardcore I like. I think I've talked to you before how I like the hardcore bands that kind of experiment more, whether it's the ceremony or the turnstile. So this was definitely a jump off place for just oh, personal yeah. writing and musical taste. Oh yeah, and like, you know, this kind of, I don't know. I, ever since I heard like basically this record, I've been obsessed with The Cure ever yeah. since. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. They're probably top five favorite band of mine oh, in yeah. general. Like, I mean, but this album, I think I I like a lot of their albums, but this is probably still my favorite one. Yeah, um, this is mine too. This is, as I've said before in several episodes, this is a album you have to listen to wholly, you know. And oh, it's a very yeah. heartfelt album, too. The album is very heartfelt. So, you know, I think this is a good jumping in point for people because we talked about this before this one was pornography. And that was a little more raw. You know, we, we yeah. know the history of The Cure. So we know they they didn't start off as a poppy band. Like their oh. uh, earlier stuff is very raw, dark. Gothic. It was just like punk music, yeah. you know, like, yeah. and then this, like, yeah, you know, pornography, that record, like, they kind of started to go this way with kind of the like drawn out, like mm -hmm. slow, like kind of gothier kind of mm -hmm. like sound, but this is when they like you could tell he really found his footing mm -hmm. and like one thing i think about robert smith who like always gets overlooked is like he has got to be in my opinion the most underrated guitar player of all oh, time yeah. like yeah if you listen to some of this stuff like it's all him playing that and yeah. like the, me the the melodies on his guitar that he comes up with are just incredible and like people don't really talk about him when they talk about great guitar players, but like he's got to be up there, yeah. you know. And we, you know, because like his his riffs are so catchy. Yeah, I'm even gonna add to, uh, you know, for me, uh, I think he's a, a underrated lyricist. Oh, like, yeah. I never really hear people talk about how powerful the Cure lyrics were and how much they transcended genres you know i think and we it's funny because when you asked me if i wanted to do this you were like well are you team smiths or cure which is a real thing like you always had oh yeah team the smiths i was team both i love them both and yeah i mean i like the smiths but you know some of their stuff i can kind of do without mm -hmm. i like i like a good amount of it but like the mm -hmm. cure for me i've always been like mm -hmm cure all the way yeah. so and i think you know i think they touch so many different things you know you they they get overshadowed in the hardcore scene because you know you see the hardcore bands with the morrissey t-shirts and all that but 
Cure had an impact on that scene too, just in uh, how how heartfelt the lyrics were, you know, and just he had right. he had a real a fun personality. You know, I think yeah. I think that's one of the things that propelled them. You know, you had this guy that wasn't so angsty, so it reached a lot more people, you know. I, I love Johnny Ryan, I love Morrissey, but you know, walking in with an interview with those guys as a reporter or journalist, you know, you kind of would on eggshells and like, okay, like what am I gonna get here? Right. Robert Smith was always just kind of I don't want to say happy go lucky, but more approachable in some ways. Right. Yeah, he's kind of goofy in interviews yeah. and like, you know, he's got like the iconic like look, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in re- like in reality, he's kind of just like a guy that goofs around. Yeah. And like, yeah. You know. Yeah, and that that at times that can be refreshing to see a lead singer do that, right. especially in that type of genre, because you know there there's a lot of different very powerful front men front women in that genre but you don't get a lot of the lightheartedness goofing around sometimes you know no no i don't know yeah you're, you're right his lyrics are just pretty awesome like yeah they're not like morrissey's where mm-hmm. it's like super over dramatic and kind of like you know yeah. I always which, felt which like you can appreciate about yeah. this it's yeah. got its own like way that it works yeah. with the music Mm-hmm. but he could go that way in this but it's more like it's like poetry like you yeah. said you know, but, and, you and know like, they were just it's all about atmosphere you know he like sets up his lyrics to kind of work with the atmosphere of the song you know mm-hmm. which is why like you know this one pornography and then the mm-hmm. one after this blood flowers i think it is or like yeah. the trilogy albums or whatever and they all kind of have that like feel to it. Thing. Yeah. But this one really a lot. Yeah. And you know, I think for me, like I'm looking at the lyrics of pictures of you. Oh, you know, man, one of the lyrics song. that kind of always just stuck out to me. All these lyrics are great, but there's a lyric where he says, You were bigger and brighter and wider than the snow. You know, that's that's a simple lyric, but still powerful. Like, especially, I mean, if you're oh. lived in the Midwest, you get what he's talking about. Like, Oh man. And dude, yeah. that song is, I mean, I, one of my favorite songs of all yeah. time, like, yeah. you know, we've all had like the bad breakup or yeah. whatever. And like, you know, but that song is like super emotional. Yeah, it just makes very, you feel really weird. Very. But the the lyrics to that song are just very, beautiful and yeah. like the bass line that like oh, goes yeah. along with it, yeah. like holds it the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and it's like we talked about this earlier, like playing before we you know started recording, but like playing song, the opener of this song of this album is strange for an opener because it's like kind of slow and like dragged out a lot of shoegaze vibe from oh like very slow it's got the delay Uh, guitar like behind it and like uh but it you could tell why he does it because it sets up the atmosphere of the album but then pictures of you is kind of a strange second song yeah you know but i think that was a brave thing to do because uh we talked about this a little before this was a time when Cure was going from that dark kind of raw goth band, which a lot of people don't even know that was them. You can put on some of that earlier stuff and most people are like, oh, who's this? And they would not believe it was the Cure until you show them, you know, the actual album itself. But then to jump on this and have such a slow shoegaze opener, because on one hand, you're going to innate alienate your hardcore goth fan base you know so but then you don't have that all that transition audience built in as well so it's just a bold move to make because you're like you're you're putting that and you don't know who will react to that and how so yeah and like i mean this is when he kind of started moving a lot kind of towards the pop kind Mm. of sensibilities Mm. and stuff 
but which I mean really works well for this record because yeah. like yeah. all the choruses of like every song are like super catchy and there's yeah. some like really catchy melodies. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Like it comes back to his guitar, like mm. you know, it's almost like he like hears these riffs in his head, writes them. And then he kind of focuses around these certain riffs, yeah. you know. You know, well, you know. At the time too, while we're on pictures of you, you know, I know we're talking about the actual album itself, but that's that's the beautiful video. If there's any video oh, yeah. that matches that, is there? You know, you you feel that he really misses his ex, and you know, it's it's well played. You know, just sets the stage for it. So. Yeah, I mean, what a song. Just, I yeah, mean, yeah. You know, and with this album, we talked about how they were going into pop too. Uh, you know, I think they, we give, I feel like in the community, we kind of, if you listen to underground music, you know, you get people saying Nirvana was that the first time that punk went pop essentially. You know, I think I think you have to give some credit to the Cure too. Oh, oh for yeah, for doing that as well because to them, pop was not necessarily a dirty word, and at that time, in most circles, it was. But you know, they decided to take that on and go that route. Right, but from like a completely yeah. like weird and like dark yeah. direction. Yeah, you know, like. Because, I mean, they're, you know, I, I, some people will say this when they talk about The Cure, but I don't think they really, like, think about how, like, dark, like, yeah. somebody, like, this record specifically is. Like, and it's all about, like, love and stuff, you know, eventually the way it progresses and all that. But it throughout it, it's, like, from this really dark, Mm. kind of atmospheric mm. sound like yeah. but still poppy like yeah. no, nothing yeah. was like this before this you know like and i think that's why like in the 2000s and even now like i guarantee you you know a lot of people's some of their favorite bands their favorite band was the cure you oh, know yeah. what i'm saying like when you know, Blink-182 went see, through that you know, little pure phase thing, right. and like, you yeah. know, everybody, like. You know, I see, I see the cure influence in uh, AFI, Turnstile, oh. you know, I even see it, I've talked about this in past episodes, um, you know, I think sometimes because it's not the same music, you don't see it in the same way you know but in some instances i see the the production value or the strange sound in in someone maybe like a kanye west especially on the um oh yeah 808 heartbreaks album you know that's very much you know love lockdown love lockdown and the vid the video for love lockdown and the video for pictures of you if you watch them back to back, they both set a really good atmosphere. You have the cure on that mountain and, you know, it's just sad. He's looking at pictures in the Kanye West video. You have him alone in his apartment, just dead stare at this room. And you both visualize heartbreak very well. Like, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this like this record so influential and the band itself but just i mean these tracks on here it's crazy like love song you know the fourth track everyone knows like the like 311 version or whatever you know which like that cover or not it doesn't matter but the this the original is like in my opinion the best love song ever written mm -hmm. like the way it moves and it fits with the album but the lyrics are just beautiful and the guitar riff that comes with it throughout the whole time like and the keyboard behind it man it's just such an awesome song you know and it's a great like middle of the record kind of way it moves it forward it adds a little bit of positivity to it 
as the record moves on, you know, it continues to kind of like develop still as this like dark entity, you know, Mm -hmm. until like the last song, which is like a great closer to the whole album, you know? So, but love song, man, that like, I don't know. When I listened to this record again, a couple days ago, I, every time I hear that song, I just forget how awesome it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That that song is very good. And again, you know, to their uh genius, the lyrics aren't they're simple but intense. And that's really hard to do as a songwriter to make right. a lyric simple but intense. You know, you have to cut so much to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's like it's kind of epic too, but not in a melodramatic way you know like no matter how far away i will always love you you know like that would could sound cheesy in like certain like arrangements of music and stuff but the way that he says it in this with like how he sets the whole album up it it works completely as like this like epic story that you're following you know like I don't know. It's... He nails it. He nails it completely, you know. And uh, the title, too. So sometimes I'll talk about the art. I love the, oh, the, yeah. the art to this. It's just, but the title, Disintegration, to me, was just a great name. I remember the first time I saw this album and picked it up. Uh, I think I have. I have I heard Lullaby. It wasn't Pictures of You. That was the second song I heard off this album. But immediately after I picked up, I was like, Disintegration. That's that's a cool name for a record, but it's so fitting with this, you know? Yeah, it is. Like, I mean, yeah, just the sound of the record. He titled it perfectly. The cover art with like kind of the abstract. It's like his face looking like you're looking down on his face, but then it's like disintegrated almost, but it's got the flowers on there because he's always got like the kind of flower imagery, you know, on their records and like how he uses it. He talks about it in his songs. Like, so it's like, gives you this like back and forth of like darkness and light, like color and like gray and black you know kind of going at each other and he does that with the music on this record with like pop music and like raw like dark music coming from a different place that wasn't even really i mean like sisters of mercy was kind of doing that at the time you know but like other than that like Susie and the banshees but they took a lot from him you know like yeah so it's just it's it's a great record and like the cover you mind, like you I, said, the title you mind too. If I take a quick restroom thing really quick i'm no, sorry no, you're good dude i hate doing that oh. yeah we were talking about the album title and you brought up something very interesting to me because the album doesn't play like a normal heartbreak album you're he's slowly bleeding through these emotions. So it is essentially a disintegration. And then, you know, it's almost to a dis- disintegration of that older sound into that sound that they would transition into more of a popular post-punk sound. Yeah, for sure. And like, just looking at like some of the like deep cuts on the record too, yeah. like, like the same deep water as you that song is like really drawn out there's like not a lot of pop elements to it you know like kind of a longer song but like as you said it's like just the different emotions that Mm -hmm. like he's like going through he really picks up well i also think it's interesting that the last song on the record is it untitled you know like I don't know. Could he not think of an appropriate title for the song? Did he do that on purpose? Yeah. To like, it, you, as you a way to like because... say like you're the future is unknown. Like it's untitled, you know, like it's no, really I, interesting. I would like to think of it as the last part you said. Uh, 
it's unknown because you don't you don't know what's gonna happen after the breakup and once you break up there's still always a piece of that that lingers as well too so i mean it's it's uh, i would like to think that untitled is a purposeful act yeah Mm. for sure like i kind of have always thought it that way too it's just really interesting to me because like you know it has the the album title that same song name disintegration like two before it and then it goes to untitled you know like and like lullaby which is awesome song like that guitar riff like the acoustic sound is like it sounds so great yeah and uh which was like a single off of here you know yeah like some people would recognize it but Mm, yeah that song is like almost like how he's like finally able to sleep and it's like Mm. halfway through the record and then you know Mm. the where it goes after that it kind of like becomes kind of long-winded and dark again you know as it gradually goes to the last song so yeah it's i always thought of this as a very realistic breakup album because they're you know the track doesn't the album doesn't open up with just this banger. I think now with a lot of pop breakup songs or even some rock breakup songs, automatically you know their feelings by that first track. This These tracks slowly get bled out. Yeah, and like it, he does a great job of like making you want to hear the next song, mm-hmm. like to see mm-hmm. how he's feeling. Like, mm. you know, it's... uh, And like... Uh, did he, you know, also another question I've always had is like, what if he was like completely happy at the time, you mm-hmm. know, and like, because he seems like he's in a pretty good mood most yeah. of the time and you stuff. Know, like, what if something like he did just have, you know, happy relationship at the time or something, yeah. you know, and like he mm-hmm. just wrote this album from the view of someone else or something i don't know you know it's so i and two i think one reason we wonder that because i think that especially in america when we get breakup songs you usually get a lot of a vow i wouldn't say that there's a lot of uh vile or like hatred directed at this person he's talking about so i mean it's almost like like you said it makes you wonder was he in a relationship was he happy or was it just something that they both knew they needed to part it? And it's like, hey, you know, this isn't working out. Like, no hard feelings either way. You know, I don't I don't think this is what most people get in an American breakup album. Whether it's rock, no, rap, no. you know, you get that, like, that, you know, F U vibe, you know, all that. This, this was not this. This was, it's done. And I don't hate you. There are sad moments, but this is done. Right. Yeah. And like you can kind of hear throughout the record him accepting that, you know, until the end. But like I've almost viewed it like almost all their albums as like, uh, like fantasy tales. Yeah. Like just yeah. these ideas that he oh, like yeah. brought up in his head, you know. But like, but not the way like Morrissey does it, you yeah. know, like yeah. in, just, in just a completely different way. Oh, yeah, know? it it lends to fantasy. You know, I was telling someone almost like um, when I think of, I don't know why this is, but when I think of The Cure or and, and then I think of movies afterwards, I often think of like, Edward Scissorhands or that Tim Burton, you know, aesthetic that yeah, you could say, you know, you, you can tell Tim Burton was a Cure fan. He may not oh, be yeah. a musician, but, you know, they I mean, just look so at the guy. Yeah. Like, you know, he's got the Robert yeah. Smith hair yeah. going on and like, you know. He definitely was buying some Cure records in his college days. Like, definitely going down to the record store. Which, I mean, Dude, I'll admit it too. Yeah. Like I used to yeah. rock the Cure shirts, and like oh, I, had yeah, the, me too. I had the Robert yeah. Smith hair for a while, uh, or it was kind of long yeah. and crazy, you know. Oh like, yeah, you know I, uh, I I used to wear the makeup, and sometimes I'll still paint right. my nails, and like Cure that that's where I got that from. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. Like yeah, and like uh, I don't know. It's just 
some of the looking through this track listing, like I just forget how like yeah, I'm gonna look awesome, like myself. Fascination Street. That's oh, yeah. uh, you know, um Home Six, awesome. Yeah. The second to last track, like yeah, it's just yeah. awesome. I even like, like it's but I agree with you. You have to listen to it as a yeah. whole. You can't I put this like on and be like the same same deep water as you like. This is a this is a front to back album, you know, and this is also one of those albums too. I tell people that, you know, just it's great vinyl art. It's it's great vinyl art. You can tell there are some albums that look better on vinyl. This is one of them. I was never lucky enough to get like the original one. Uh, oh yeah, I still don't. Yeah, yeah. they just did have, like a. I they just did like a reissue, you know. Oh, they so. did. Okay. Yeah. Was it for Record Store Day yesterday? No, it. I think it was on. It might have been one of them last year or something. Okay. But because I mean, I've tried to find the original of this record for you know I'm a record collector and like yeah. I've tried to find it for a long time and I have not been able to because it's hard. It's hard. I have a uh, have one of their records. Uh, Now I have to go get it, Austin. I'm sorry. Yeah, do it. Do it. Yeah, I have the uh, Boys Don't Cry. Which, yeah, that's like the first one, you know, yeah. and like completely different kind of vibe. But, you yeah. know, everyone knows that song, you know. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. And that was that was when they were still, you know, raw, like raw but even in their rawness you can always tell that they played with melody you know melody wasn't necessarily a bad oh, yeah. thing for them like and i feel like that was a lot evident for those post-punk bands you know there's a documentary that's coming out and it applies it applies to cure and bands that fall under that and this is the first time i've heard someone say this um a lot of those bands found, they said, the three core structure just as oppressive as traditional rock and roll. So they were like, no, we want it to sound different, pull in fantasy sounds or whatnot. So, right. Yeah. It's yeah, because that's like, his songs, they're very simple. Like, the way they're structured and even like, the kind of chords that are played and stuff but he does a great job of layering everything like the keyboards behind it kind of like bring it along and the bass drives every song you know and like hold steady the whole time wow and then he like plays a lot of like riffs you know yeah. where it goes into opposed to like just chords you know mm -hmm. so and they've always been good about knowing where to leave that space because there's some moments that are very silent and he knows how to place that after or before some lyrics that just also feed into it oh yeah yeah i mean it's just the way he thinks the way he like plans everything out is it's done simply but it works really well even like the layout of the album oh, i mean yeah. you know that they had to have yeah. like they probably spent a lot of time on like oh, how they definitely. want to arrange the record, you know, and uh, the way they do it is, is like evident perfect. by the, the song titles as well. Like the song oh, yeah. titles are laid out in a very purposeful way. Yeah, very like plain world. song, you know, to start yeah. untitled at the end, but then like the middle is lullaby and like love song early on, later on, like as he's like feeling these different emotions it's like prayers for brain you know mm. like to like wash away his feelings you know is like what the song's about like it's mm. uh it's pretty it's pretty cool yeah it's it's definitely a good it's a great album for sure oh yeah yeah so any any closing thoughts about it oh I always just i mean i guess yeah his voice too because we didn't really talk about yeah, his voice, you gotta talk like, about his voice it's unique you know here. yeah 
you and know, it's like now it's like super in imitatable yeah you know, like, it's like you know you know robert smith you know and another thing too about his vocals too uh i think he very much was trying to sing too i think back oh, yeah. then like a lot of bands weren't trying to see and i think those bands always stick out you know whether it's uh like Husker Du wanting to play more slower chords you know just or just wanting to take that next musicianship level and Robert Smith wanted to sing and he tried and he oh, sung yeah. well he sung very well yeah it's like not traditional and like he's not the best singer in the world but for like he writes around it so that it works with mm -hmm. it, you know. Yeah. And it now, like it's imitatable, you know. Oh, and like yeah, people yeah. have gone on that were really influenced by him to kind of, but that's the thing. He influenced people that couldn't sing to like just try to sing, put yourself out there, and like you can make it sound good, you know. Yeah, like oh. I, also, I've never seen these dudes live, but I don't know if you have. But I, I haven't either. I like, wish I haven't. I don't even know if they've come to Omaha. I was trying to research that. So, yeah, they came to Kansas City. I remember probably like, I mean, it's probably been about eight years, something mm. like that now. And I wanted to go, and I sh I should have. I don't know why I didn't. Those misses, we call them. I hate those. I have a lot of those too. Well, since you mentioned that i also gotta mention this we also have to talk about the style that they left on the scene oh you man know, that yeah. that style is iconic and i think that style um uh, goes farther than most people think because i think that style does now um uh, jump into hip-hop a lot you know kid cuddy is a huge huge Cure fan and you know he's had some of androgyny like he's shown up in dresses you know in black eyeliner and just right that's that's yeah i think what they did for that look yeah i mean the cure like raised the bar on everything like musically culturally like uh like as far as style wise, mm. I should say, you know, like um, even like punk rock kind of yeah. style, you know, like mm. where, you know, it wasn't about like studs and leather jackets anymore. It was like, like you yeah. said, people wearing makeup, you yeah. know, and he'd always wear the messed up lipstick yes. all over his face, you know, like, yeah. But like, you know, and they've even, and I think was was enduring to me too, is they even touched the L.A. hardcore scene, which, I mean, that scene. The one thing about that scene is that scene was very insular. There weren't many bands that played right. with outside influences, but the Germs they dressed very much. Oh like yeah, Cure X dressed very. So I mean, that's that's a. Uh, a credit in itself because you know it, there wasn't a lot of stuff that went into that scene as far as outside of that very loud fast rules approach yeah and what's crazy is like the cure i think this album came out in what 89 mm -hmm. around 80 i know it was 80 something. pretty sure phone locking up on me so yeah let me look real quick because i, I want to make sure i'm right on 1989 that. yeah so what's crazy is like they'd been a band for like 12 years yeah. when this because they started like 77 78 i think is the that boys don't cry record mm -hmm. that you showed i think yeah. it came out in 78 something like that probably I can look that up too. Yeah. Let's see. The vinyl doesn't say it, but I am horribly blind. <laughs> 1979. It was on a fiction record. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's crazy to think yeah. about. Like, 
they'd already been a band for, you know, 10 years, something like this. And then he puts out his like landmark album, you know, and like, you know how you played in a band. So, you know, how hard at times it can be to just after, go that long in a band. Oh, even to be in a band for 10 years, but yeah. to like, yeah. then like really kind of find like your sound, keep it fresh, you know, because I mean, he like completely switched it up with this record and like, mm -hmm. I mean, anyone that likes the cure can tell you like, you know, this is the like, whether this is your favorite album or not, doesn't it's matter this is like album. the landmark yeah. album right yeah, yeah. It, so. it it previewed that sound they went into and you know just a lot of things were gonna happen after this album so yeah it's yeah. awesome anyone yeah. out there if they've never listened to this record yeah. like listen to it you know yeah. you might oh, you at first you might be like oh these vocals are kind of weird but <laughs> it like the more you go it like just really it's, it's awesome powerful record so i think you just reminded me of something too uh you know i even see elements of the cure in someone like frank ocean there's a mm -hmm. great grammy performance uh where he performs forrest gump and the reason i'm bringing this up is when you have a shaky voice like that i think it sells something better you know i will pull from a blog i wrote a long time ago uh different genre a little but it reply it applies to it you know the difference between a uh, vocals of frank ocean and usher you know, you can, not to say that you don't believe Usher, but you believe Frank Ocean's vocals because they're a bit more shaky and a bit more real, you know? Right. So if, if Frank Ocean is crying to you about, like, I shouldn't say cry, like, expressing his disappointment with love, you're a little more likely to believe that than an Usher oh, vocal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. There's right, because they're rawness in the voice. They're putting themselves out there, like we talked about him, like not being the best singer, Robert Smith, but like he goes full force and like he's like, I don't care if you don't think I'm a good singer, I'm gonna do it, you know, and I'm not gonna find a singer for my band. I'm gonna sing, you know, like and it, yeah, you like believe them. It's like it, it makes it totally genuine, you know. And like I agreed, same with Frank Ocean. I'm like a big Frank Ocean fan. Oh, nice, and like, yeah. yeah, and like it's same thing. Like you believe them a lot more than you would this person that you know can naturally just like put themselves out there and just has this beautiful voice, which is great. But like it's fun to appreciate the ones that like still put themselves out there, but are a little more avant garde, you know. Yes. So yes. Well, my final thoughts I'll leave the listeners with. Um, again, to reiterate what Austin said, check out this album. Uh, gonna expand a little more. You know, you can see this album influence in everyone from AFI to, I believe, Turnstile Ceremony. I'm even gonna take it to other genres, production stuff you can find in the Kanye uh, Heartless video. And I'm even going to say you can find some of that darkness in early weekend recordings. You know, those oh, early yeah. mixtapes by the weekend House of Balloons, he was listening to a lot of Cure, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me again, Austin. So, yeah, I'm no sure problem. We, I'm, yeah, I'm sure we'll be doing more albums. So, oh, definitely. yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have anything you want to plug for yourself i know you do shows so yeah i mean kind of wrapping up you know with the semester and everything but i uh, do a couple sports talk shows you know for those who like sports it's kind of weird because i'm like one of those people like people think that you can't do like like music and like sports you know and i kind of like I'm like way into both. So yeah, I've been I think to get... uh, coming up, I'm kind of developing it, but I'm going to kind of do a couple uh, two like a two hour radio show where I kind of mm. do both, where I play some of my favorite bands. And then I kind of talk about what's going on in the sports world from like well, more I of a to... like 
underground approach, you know. So I have to stop by, you know. I love music, but I love oh, yeah. too. Like I've told you about this project. I want to talk about how Joe Namath, you know, set the mold for the rock star football player. Oh yeah, totally, athlete. man. So yeah. Well, thank you again for joining me. Yeah, man. Yeah. Totally. It was awesome. Mm-hmm.